This Christmas message by Pastor Stephen Yoon at the Sucker Sunny United Methodist Church, December 24th, 2022. Good to be with you tonight. Would you join me as I pray? Dear God, in Jesus Christ, you, uni you united all things, things in heaven, things on earth, things above, things below. Help us to receive you when you come to us, O oh God. And help us to follow your Son, Jesus Christ, not only on Christmas Day, but every day. Open our hearts and minds to the words of Scripture and help us understand your will for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last week, I went to my daughter's orchestra concert at uh, Roxbury High School uh, when her orchestra was about to play their first song. I took out my smartphone and tried to record. But, you know, my cell phone uh, would not allow me to do it with a message that said, not enough storage space. Clear some space in stories and try again. So I opened the gallery app and deleted some of the photos and videos I, you know, I didn't need to keep anymore. The first song was kind of short, well, perhaps it was felt short to me because the song ended while I was working on it. And before the second song was about to begin, I deleted even more and tried it again. And guess what? This amazingly uh, stupid, I mean smartphone, <laughs> was still giving me the same message. Not enough storage space, clear some space and try again. You know, I tried, right? And I certainly uh, tried to clear some space, and later I figured out uh, why it didn't work, though. I've been using uh, my cell phone for over two years, and, you know, the storage was completely full, so uh, it needed a lot more free space for the system to run. As I was reflecting on my heart during this season of Advent, I realized that sometimes I'd been acting like my smartphone. You know, it sent out the same message. No more space. Try again. As a pastor, as a father, husband, as an adjunct professor, I thought, you know, I was working smart. Multitasking, juggling my busy schedules and meetings and obligations. But I realized that there were times when I sent out the same message to those who were around me, those who needed me. <clears throat> there's not enough space, there's not enough room in me for you. Try again later. Friends, sometimes we send out the same message to our loved ones. And even to God. Saying, God, there's no room in me for you. Try again later. In my Christmas letter to you, I wrote about one of, the fav one of my favorite songs, a um, song I grew up listening. The song was written by a Korean gospel singer, but became popular even among non-Christians because of the relevance and depth of the message. The song goes like this. My mind full of myself that there's no resting place. My mind full of empty wishes, there is no place to find peace. Darkness I cannot overcome, take the only place you can rest. Deep sorrow grows like thorn bushes in the wilderness of my heart. Friends, if this song somehow resonates with you during this season, please know you're not alone. God knows you and God knows your heart. And God wants to journey with you in the wilderness of your heart today and bring you home. 
Those of you who saw the uh, banner outside as you were entering the sanctuary, it says, Welcome home. Welcome home. We know home is more than just a place. Home is something you feel you keep close to yourself wherever you are, and whether you like it or not, for better or worse, for our presence or absence. A home is a crucial point of reference in our memory, experience, and imagination. Because home is a place where we write a story of ourselves and our lives. We may leave home, but home never leaves us, as one pastoral theologian noted. Do you know why? Because home is where our heart is. Certainly, home has become a more complicated notion, not only because of everyday encounters with our homeless fellow citizens, but also because of the great increase in refugees, asylum seekers, and victims of natural disasters in many parts of the world. Home is where you find a sense of peace, rest, and belonging. What's amazing about Christmas is that it's a season of homecoming. Families gather around the table and share their favorite holiday dishes. They share love and warmth and presence with each other, which is wonderful. But by mentioning homecoming, I'm not just talking about family gatherings. I'm also talking about the meaning of Christmas as homecoming. The theological meaning of incarnation, God becoming flesh, as John's gospel witnesses. You know, the four gospels in the New Testament tell us the story of Jesus in, in different and yet harmonious ways. They're like a quartet that sings four different parts in a song, enriching the song with beautiful harmony and depth. Tonight we heard the timeless stories of the birth of Jesus narrated in the Gospels. The stories of Mary and Joseph, the stories of shepherds and the angels. But again, unlike the other Gospels, John begins the story of Jesus not with a birth in a manger, but with the words of a preacher that says, The Word became flesh and dwell among us. In the Greek, the verb dwell, the word dwell literally means to tent. What this means is that in Jesus Christ, God pitched his tent among humanity. In Jesus, our God made room. God made him home among us so that God could dwell within us, become our Savior and our friend. The Word who became flesh, Jesus Christ, it's therefore God's word to the world, God's message to the world, the message that says home is where God is, home is in the Lord. A couple of years ago, I remember having a conversation with a homeless man who was leaning against the outside of our church building. I shared this story before. I went out and asked him, Hi, I'm a Stephen pastor of the pastor of this church. Is there anything I can do for you? You know, I was assuming that he just came for financial assistance like many others. He said, I just like to be near God's church. I was trying to say a prayer. I was struck by his response and I felt ashamed to assume that I knew what he needed at the moment. It was one of those freezing days in December like today, so I invited him in and offered him a cup of coffee. While drinking coffee, he shared with me, you know, a little bit about his life journey. He was definitely going through some personal turmoil, and he asked me, Pastor, how can I listen to God's will? I took one of the Bible and read Psalm 23 with him explaining how God becomes our good shepherd through his wonderful words of life. 
Later, I asked him if he would be willing to receive financial assistance. Our church has a compassion fund to support those in need in our community, but he refused, wishing that it could be used for someone who would be in, in a more desperate situation. He was willing to receive my personal gift, though, the Bible, the Bible that I, he and I read together. He was willing to receive the Word of God, one of the most precious gifts given by our Lord. My encounter with this stranger was truly a blessed moment that made me think of the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas is all about homecoming. It's about the Word of God who became flesh, made Him home among us so that we can always come home. No matter how far we have wandered, there is a place to return. Home has come down to us, so we are always brought to our senses that true home is in the Lord. We're not bound by walls contained by addresses or limited by borders and barriers. Even though we may leave home on our journey, home never leaves us. Now going back to the song I mentioned in the beginning, to those who find no resting place in their mind because their heart is full of their, themselves. Jesus is God's sermon that encourages, come to me, all who are weary, I'll give you rest. To those who find no peace in their mind full of empty wishes from the world, Jesus is God's sermon that assures, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. To those who cannot overcome darkness in their lives, Jesus is God's sermon that proclaims, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. To those who are stricken by a deep sorrow that grows like thorn bushes in the wilderness of their hearts, Jesus is God's sermon that comforts. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Friends, Jesus is God's message to the world. Sitting in a mass, wandering in the wilderness, and living homeless, Jesus is God's sermon, God's word to the world that home has come down to all of us who are in the journey of homecoming. Like the shepherds, like the wise men, each of you is on your way to a true home found in the Lord who loves a homecoming of his children. And you are not alone in this journey, friends. You don't have to walk alone. God calls us to walk with this community of faith and walk each other home. All you need to do is to make room for Christ and others. This year, we ask you to share your Christmas cards with your church family, as you watched uh, from the countdown video. And our music director, Audrey Schultz, shared a piece of music she wrote in 1995 it was part of a children's musical inspired by one of C.S. Ruiz's book, Narnia books, The Last Battle. In this book, one of the characters describes the stable where Jesus was born. It says, it's bigger on the inside than on the outside. The further up, the further in you go, the bigger everything gets. It talks about the magical nature of God's love. As we make room in our hearts for others, Christ enlarges our room and grows our hearts in love. I want to close my message by singing Audrey's Sing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to read the words of the song. I hope our choir could sing this song someday. Come to the stable. Come through the door. Inside, it's larger than ever before. There is room for all people 
for in the cattle stall lies the hope of all the world in a baby small. Go from the stable, go to the world. Tell the good news some have still never heard. Go as the shepherd went, eagerly to share. Tell the story of God's love. Tell it everywhere. And the refrain goes like this. Come, bring your love. Come, bring your lives. Come, lay them down. Then rise transformed. Old fear has gone. Now joy has come. Great hope is born on Christ mourn. On Christ mourn. Hope is born. Amen.